So tonight will be an opportunity for me to kind of share some of the journey and thinking about how we've got to this point and hopefully to answer some of the questions you might have. Now, the online event is not a time for a full Q&A session. Um, we've got that planned for a little bit later on the 4th of March. But if you do have any questions, um, pop them in the chat uh, and one of my colleagues will be answering them as we go along. Just to make sure that everybody gets access to this, just to let you know, we will be recording this uh, and then circulating it. So anybody who's missed tonight gets an opportunity to view it so they can take part in the consultation. OK. Ready, OK. OK, hopefully we can all see that screen. So we have called this the MAC consultation, but really this is about the future of, of Riverview, about our federation. The Riverview Federation came into existence as a partnership between Castle Dyke uh, and Baysgarth because of a long history of collaboration between those two schools. And really, it hasn't been in existence for that long. Really, September 2022 was when we formalised that federation. And even though we haven't been in existence for that long, the power of that partnership has meant that both Castle Dyke and Baysgarth achieved their best ever results last year and some phenomenal outcomes. Working together and being able to share some of our services and pool our resources together means that we can get some greater financial stability across both schools. It is certainly not a secret that finances for education is a real struggle, particularly in small primary schools. So we do share some services, which means we can free up the resources that we need so we can focus on what we want to do, which is teaching. We've also managed to find some uh, opportunities for some additional staffing. Sometimes when we can't afford a whole TA as one establishment, uh, pooling our finances means that we can do that across the Federation. That doesn't mean that the staff go between the two schools. It just means that the finances can be moved so we get the right resource in the right school. And I guess the one that I would probably champion the most would be that we learn from each other. Castle Dyke have such a rich expertise in terms of phonics and reading, which we have hugely benefited from. Some of the learning that we've taken from the foundation stage, um, thinking about play and how we can apply that even at secondary level has been invaluable. So we really have seen the benefits of partnerships. But the opportunity has come to see whether or not it's the right time to expand that partnership and look to form new ones or whether or not we just stay as we are. Now, the educational sector is changing hugely. Uh, currently, nationally, around 80% of secondary schools have now academised and 40% of primaries are. Now, the government at one point did direct all schools to look at this as a particular route. That political pressure is not there so much anymore, but very much looking at ways in which schools can work together to get efficiencies so that we can make sure we make the very best use of any finances that we do have that are available. Within our own authority at the moment, we are close to that 50% mark, 50% um, of schools in our authority being academies. And we do have some of the very, very big academy chains present in our authority. But actually, it might be surprising to you to know there are actually 14 different MATs that do have an organisation within our authority. So there's a much greater degree of diversity than what you maybe would have expected. Now, from my background, I have came from a maintained school that we did end up in an academy chain, uh, one of the big academy chains, um, national one. Um, and then I've moved back into maintained sector. So I can say, having worked in maintained and in academies, there is a huge variation. And of those 14 different mats, no two of them are exactly the same. But we don't sit in an isolation. What we have seen looking around us is over the last few years, we have seen a, a change in the educational provision in other authorities as well. We are uniquely placed where we are, but we do neighbour East Riding, Hull and North East Link, just to name three. And as you can see from this particular slide, there has been the trajectory of moving towards academisation. The pattern is normally that secondaries will explore this first, uh, followed by primary schools. And the rationale for why schools are choosing this 
really varies depending on their circumstances. From my previous experience, I was in a school that wasn't performing as well as it could be. Uh, and academisation was a way of helping us raise standards. I have other colleagues who have come from a very different uh, multi-academy trust, where actually it was a, a collaboration of schools that were all good or outstanding coming together to share. So again, there is not one single driver that causes a school to look at this particular route. But what you can see is the trajectory of movement in schools towards academisation is in all of our neighbouring authorities. We know that that pace of academisation is certainly going to increase, particularly in East Riding, um, where probably by the end of next academic year, all of the secondary schools will have converted as well. So we're seeing a national picture that's very much moving towards finding efficiencies, finding financial efficiencies to free up resources so that we can focus on teaching children to the very best of our ability, spending the time doing the things that matter the most. So what have we been exploring? Now, this is a genuine consultation. For Riverview, we have only been in existence for a little over a year. Um, and for us, we are genuinely contemplating where do we take our next step? Now, we have had lots of debates about what the future could hold. Do we just stick as we are, continue working with Castledyke, continue working with other local schools and provisions uh, and secure what we have here? Do we try and grow our federation? Do we try and work with more and more local schools? Do we look to form our own map? Do we decide that actually we are going to form a multi-academy multi trust and we recruit other schools to work with us? Or do we look at a partnership with others where we could keep the integrity of what we've formed in terms of the federation, in terms of Riverview, but extend that to other partners as well. And it's really been those four pathways that we've been considering over a period of nearly two years now. So some of these consultations, some of these discussions even predate the formation of the federation. And we had a unique opportunity to look at formulating something quite unique with the partners that you'll see on the screen here. Wyke, Market Wheaton School, Market Wheaton Infant School, and then ourselves as Riverview as Baysgarth and Castledyke. Now you may wonder, well, they, there doesn't seem to be a lot of connection between those schools up there, so how did this come, come about? Well, actually there's probably more connections than you realise. Wyke is the number one destination in terms of sixth form provision for the students at Baysgarth. So we've always had a very strong relationship with them and worked with them for transition. Market Wheaton has got a very long history of excellence with regards to inclusion. Now, anybody that's involved with Riverview will know that at Castle Dyke and Baysgarth, inclusion is at the heart of everything we do. Our headway provision, our discover provision, our hopefully our future SRP provision is all about making sure that no matter what a child's needs are, we can meet them in our locality. Now that remains and continues to be a huge struggle when resources are stretched so tight, but it is our number one priority. And we have looked to schools like Market Wheaton that have managed this really successfully to learn from them and see how they manage it. In a school that's much smaller than us, that has a much higher percentage of children with additional needs who are thriving in a mainstream environment. So we've already begun those very soft partnerships anyway, learning from each other and taking the very best practice that we can locally. So I've referenced before, my last experience of academisation was very, very different to this one. In that particular example, it was around improving a school's outcomes. We were a school that needed some support. That is, has not been how this idea has come into fruition. We have five settings that are all good or outstanding. We are all strong with expertise in certain fields. And we are coming together not to support each other because we are underperforming, but to share and collaborate, to work together to find new ways of working, to be innovative and creative, Baysgarth and Riverview have a long, long history of doing things that nobody else has done. That is how we've ended up with our headway provision, which we're exceptionally proud of. But we want to grow our headway provision. We would like to have a provision that caters for Key Stage 2 students as well. We'd like to expand our SEM provision. 
we would like to extend our high flyers program. All of these are opportunities that these other providers could help us with. So our collaboration came through mutual respect for each other's expertise and thinking about how we could work together. Now, there's a very unique feature about the map that is being proposed. The map that's being proposed, sorry, I'm just going to get back. Sorry, fade back to that one. The map that is being proposed is very different from probably the one that you will have in your head from looking at the other big academy chains. In those, everything is very much driven by the centre um, and everybody else is kind of dictated too with some shared services, some shared policies, some shared practices. That's one of the things that doesn't work when we look at strong schools collaborating together. The uniqueness of Baysgarth and Castledyke is what is the most important thing to us. We do not want any partnerships that will erode or take away from what makes us so special, what will stop us giving our students what we think is the very best for them. So in this model, it's a locality model. The idea would be that Riverview, as a family of schools with us and Castledyke, would pretty much remain in existence with the partnership that it is in the Barton locality. We would have localised control over some finance, we would have localised control over some of our facilities like the Sports Village, we will have localised governance. This is not a model where everything is centralised. What can be centralised are services that are currently being provided by the local authority. Those high level services are around finance, around HR, that currently we would broker from our local authority. Why can't we in the position to be able to provide some of those due to the fact that they are not a maintained school already, they are a, a corporation by the definition of a sixth form college. Therefore, they do have the capacity to replicate some of those services, allowing us to continue to develop those shared services that we've currently got in existence between Baysgarth and Castledye. So what would be the difference? Well, I would still be the head here. Mrs Potterson would still be the head at Castledyke. The staff at both establishments would all remain the same. We wouldn't be moving between establishments. Our uniforms, our logos, our curriculums would all stay the same. Any changes that are made are about enhancing things, about making particularly transitions seamless and easy for families and for children, but there will be no wholesale changes. The changes that will be made will be those backroom services that we are currently procuring from the local authority. Now, one of the other comments that or fears that you may have is that we have seen, I'm sure there are lots of articles in the news about CEOs with big wages and huge teams at the top of multi-academy trusts. We are five like-minded schools that are setting up a multi-academy trust that is all about peer-to-peer -peer support and school improvement. There is no big centralised team. The centralised team is as small as it can be, focusing on those key backroom services. There is not deputy CEOs, there is not heads of school improvement, because we are all good and outstanding schools. We can facilitate that working as peer leaders between us. We've worked hard on what we think our vision and values and mission are all about. And you will see in there, I'm hoping, that there is a flavour of both Baysgarth and Castledyke through. One of the things that we are particularly proud of is around that true commitment to an inclusive offer. Now, you will see a reference in there about Church of England schools. Currently, that is a barrier to us growing our federation um, in North Lincolnshire. Our diocese is not a fan of faith schools joining with non-faith um, academies as part of a multi-academy trust. Whereas other dioceses, particularly York, um, which East Riding would come under, are much more favourable. So there is hopefully the intention that some of the primary schools that are within the Market Wheaton cluster, that are Church of England schools, will be joining um, the MAT in further years. This does not mean we all become Church of England schools. They have their own distinct ethos, which they will maintain and they will cherish, and that allows us to remain as a non-faith school and keep our own identity as well. 
So why are we considering this? And we are genuinely considering this. Our governing body is really keen to hear what every single parent, staff member, community representative feels about this. This is not a decision that has already been made. But there are some things that we have found along our journey that we do think would be a benefit of extending our partnerships. Now, at the heart of this decision making is a protection about Riverview, a protection of the relationship that we have with Castle Dyke currently. Maintaining that partnership for the benefits of the children and of the staff and the parents that we've started to build. We are both Barton based and we feel very passionately about our local community in terms of Barton. And we want to make sure that the work that we are doing is reinvested into our local community. We want to make sure that the sports village at Baysgarth reinvests any of the profits that it makes from renting out our services and our facilities back in to more opportunities for the children, such as the half term activity sessions that we were running over the half term. We can see that actually our finances can be used more efficiently. Only being allowed to procure our services from the local authority removes us the ability to actually look for value for money. And sometimes that inefficiency is a barrier to us being able to do the things that we want to do in school for the children that we have. I have to say that increasingly I am finding that myself and my senior teams across both schools, we are finding ourselves focusing on the wrong things because services are sometimes not operating at the level that we need them to. We are spending more time on some of the admin and the backroom services of finance and HR that really we, we want to. We want to focus all of our time on teaching and learning, getting out into classrooms and making sure that every child gets a better experience. So by centralising some of that service, being able to procure the best services, the right expertise at the right time in a much more efficient and flexible way will actually enhance our time within school. There is always plenty to learn. There are opportunities at Wyke, who are an outstanding college now, for us to learn in terms of their teaching and learning, their pastoral support. There are opportunities for us to learn and to grow with Market Wheaton and for the infant school. We continually strive to be a better organisation, just enhancing and tweaking what we've already developed. Working with any partner will lead to that. Working with Castle Dyke, we have already seen the power of pooling of resources, pooling of our expertise, not replicating work, not having two schools doing exactly the same piece of work because of a change in legislation, wasting time rather than pooling that resource together, doing it once and sharing it. There will be some enhanced education opportunities. We've even started to see them across our Riverview partnership, but being able to extend that particularly at secondary level with opportunities to maximise the facilities at work, the opportunities to increase our aspirations, opportunities to see the potential of destinations that they could go on to, kind of post 16 and into higher education. Transitions are always very scary for children. We've worked very hard at making sure that our children coming up from year six into year seven are appropriately supported. We do a very good job when it comes to the social and the emotional transition, but there is still more we could do around the curriculum, making sure that really as professionals, we understand how children's learning moves between each key stage. There is lots of expertise at every phase level, foundation, key stage one, key stage two, three, four and five, and we can all learn from each other. That curriculum cohesion to make sure that we all know what children need to have embedded before they progress onto the next stage will only help our children be more successful. And the last one, we have been looking at our future over the past two years. And during those two years, we have seen the educational landscape change hugely. And for that, we think in order to be able to manage and navigate that change, we need to be able to be flexible and adaptable in the future because we do know we do not know what is coming. There will be a, probably a change in the political party 
but we certainly know there is not going to be any more money moving in towards education. So we need to continue to be able to be flexible and find ways to be able to keep driving teaching and learning forward. So these are the things that have got us to the point of saying, actually, we need to ask our community now what they think. So as part of the consultation, there are some drop-in sessions where there is an opportunity to speak to members of the senior leadership team at both schools. Uh, Paul Britton, the principal of WIKE, will be on hand as well. Um, and you can actually have some of those personal conversations that you might have. We're going to run two, one at Castle Dyke. So we'll start at 3.15, uh, pretty much at collection time. And then we will move up to Baysgarth for a slightly later slot at 4.30. So there is a plenty of opportunity for you to actually come in and sit down, particularly if you do have any concerns or worries or questions that you're not sure have been fully answered um, before the consultation closes on the 11th of March. Now, in addition to this, there is also, which is linked into the letter that you should have received, there are there is a website, um, the video uh, and the brochure and lots of frequently asked questions. So within that, you will find many of the questions that have been posed to us and by our staff when we have been along this journey and, and our responses to them that will just help you maybe make sense of why we are in this position. At this point I will just pause and ask if we have got any questions that need answering in the chat Mr Roberts. No questions? Okay does anybody have any questions they would like us to answer? Okay. Well, I very much appreciate all of you for attending this evening. If there are any questions, please put them in through to the consultation or just use the normal mechanisms that you would do to contact us, email through and we will do our best to, to answer them. This is a completely unique approach to setting up a map. We have no blueprint, so we are working our way through um, as we go. So we don't have the answers to all of the questions just yet, um, but we will certainly do our best to answer any of your concerns. So with that, I shall bid you all a good night. And hopefully I will see you on the 4th of March.